Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of the War on Zero series. Right now what you're seeing is a mod that I'm working on printing the... Right now what you're seeing is a mod that I'm working on, a cover for the bottom electronics chamber. And this also requires a modification to the skirts on the sides as well. Just needs one hole in each skirt for a threaded insert. So that's what you're seeing printing right now and here it is printed and assembled as you can see i think this looks pretty nice and yeah it covers the electronics chamber nicely and uh, with hard case tall feet mod i think he calls it something else but i'm going to keep calling it that the rubber feet extend below the uh, bottom plate so uh, nothing touches the table or whatever you put this on so uh, yeah this works really nicely and with the with my uh, no rear panel mod or whatever I called it, I don't remember, uh, with that mod as well, you can see that pretty much everything electronics wise is enclosed nicely. Now you'll also notice that there is no pocket watch here. In the last episode, um, I showed you this test cube and called it pretty decent because at that moment through the screen on my phone when recording, it looked decent enough, but uh, yeah, it, it still has some weird lines and all of that uh, bad looking parts of it got amplified when I printed a 3D Banshee here. You can see that this is pretty ugly and uh, yeah, this is nowhere near the quality that I normally expect from my V0 and well, uh, before all the stupid stuff happened and my SD card died, etc., I was getting pretty decent prints. So uh, I initially blamed my config and tried to fix it a few times, but yeah, that didn't help. And after closer inspection of the pocket watch, well, I realized this Whitler shuttle has the threaded insert was loose. I pushed it really in there on this time and shaved a bit off from the top but even that got loose so um, yeah i could i guess get a reprint of this and uh, you know try that but i even before the firmware stuff i was feeling like in terms of the speed what was keeping me back was the extruder and also this motor was getting really hot be even before the uh, new firmware you can see that i actually melted a bit of it thanks to the motor's heat so uh yeah all of that led to that to be led to the decision to uh, mount a mobius 4 or m4 at the back so that's what i'm printing right now uh it requires it just modifies one of the files for the m4 and that's to allow you to mount it to these two holes the default stock holes for the uh, pocket watch mount so uh, yeah that's what I'm printing right now and with that I should be able to mount a pancake NEMA 17 and not only get better speeds but also a better resolution thanks to its uh, 4 to 1 gearing so uh, yeah I guess let's get to it and print the parts and I'll come back to you once it is assembled extruder by default is not compatible with the Voron Zero and getting it in here took some modification and well, all of the files will be linked in the description below. It ju you just need two custom parts and the rest you can just use the stock Mobius 4 parts. And you can see that it's now working. Now getting that to work also was a challenge by itself, not because uh, not because the uh, Mobius is a bad extruder, it's just because we have to use a pancake to mount it there. And um, I have three pancake steppers. This guy from Tevo, 
I have a LDO one that I don't know where I put. Uh, here it is. I also have this LDO one that I actually bought for the War on Two's gantry, that, but it didn't work. And well, uh, yeah, that's because of the. That's because I'm, I have a 350 War on Two and it doesn't work with 350s. So that's basically the only thing wrong with it. Well, this was the first motor that I tried and it didn't work. It was skipping steps all over the place and increasing the current. Well, that helped obviously, but it wasn't enough. So from this, which is a 0.9 degrees stepping angle motor, I went to this guy, this Tevo motor. Uh, this was, at least at the time, they sold this for the Titan Extruder E3D. And, well, I guess it works for that. It didn't work for this either. Unless I... Um, uh, uh, in, oh, can't I speak today? Unless I increase the current to uh, 1.4 or something like that, this didn't work. It only worked at a uh, ridiculous uh, current like that. And it's ridiculous because this is rated 4.7. So this was really hot, probably even hotter than the installation rating of this thing so definitely wasn't usable so as a last try i moved to a e3d motor there that's another 0.9 degree stepping angle motor so effectively we moved from 3 to 1 gear ratio to 8 to 1 gear ratio because the modius is 4 to 1 and the stepping angle is also doubled or halved which means uh, more resolution whatever you get it the problem with that is that motor is a little taller than the mount, so I had to uh, edit the STL even further, but right now it's working as you can see, and we're printing pretty well. I should also mention that while the stock for ADT uh, pulley won't work with a rear panel, I'm not using one anyway, but I'm saying this for you. Uh, if you swap this to the black Voron ATT uh, pulley from pouch, the ones with the, the one without the flange, you can even put the back panel on if you really need to. So uh, yeah, this mod works uh, for the V0 just fine, and I'm really happy with the, how this thing turned out. And also ma should mention it mounts to the same uh, two holes with the exact same spacing that we have for the. A pocket watch so yeah you don't have to modify your uh, mid panel I guess or whatever that panel is so uh, yeah as you can see this is working perfectly so let's just uh, wait a while for the print to finish and let's take a look at the print quality well the parts do technically look better but uh, there's still some things that I need to address but just very quickly let me show you that this was the uh, print before uh, switching to the Mobius 4. S some of the most notable problems is this uh, zitting in the back that there's supposed to be text there and you can also see the vertical lines, some cooling issues around here and um, overall it doesn't really look that good. This is the first print with uh, Mobius. You can see that it's still not readable, but the text in the back looks better, and uh, you'll also see that overall the print is smoother, but uh, you can still see the vertical lines, and uh, well, it still overall doesn't look that great. Now, I was able to fix some of the problems by increasing the current of the uh, A, B, and Z drives, and... Uh, yeah, you can see that the text is even closer to the truth and uh, the vertical lines have decreased but uh, the motors, the A, B and Z motors, they're rated for 5.5 amps and I'm at that. So uh, yeah, I can't go any further, in fact I probably should reduce it. So uh, yeah, that's not gonna work. Now. In my opinion, the biggest problem is with the uh, consistency of the layers, the problems with the Z. You can see that uh, they move 
a little left and right. I think that has to do with the uh, setup of the Z on the printer right now with the uh, lead screw and the belted uh, drive from the motor and the way the lead screw is mounted with two bearings that uh, don't align that greatly. So um, yeah, I think that's what needs to be addressed and I think I'm on the right track with that because uh, yeah, I think some people have had success swapping that with a integrated lead screw with a stepper directly below it. Now, I don't have that, but what I do have is this lead screw and a motor to lead screw coupling. So what I want to do is just swap the, this part with a printed different part and just use the regular old coupling from the motor to the lead screw. So it will be direct drive, not belted and there won't be anything aligning this uh, vertically other than the mount coupling itself so i think that will uh, help me address the print quality issues this is many many hours later and you can see the ldo motor here this is the same ldo motor that uh, i tried on my v2 for the gantry it didn't work on this uh, v0 i tried this for the extruder it didn't work for that either but uh, hopefully it will work for the z but uh, yeah who knows it's that same ldu motor high temperature 0 0.9 degrees stepping angle and the uh, reason i use this is because this is the most compact uh, motor that i have at the moment most compact pancake and i definitely need that because it's uh, the video is in 2D, but obviously uh, you can probably guess if you have a V0, it is pretty close to the height of the skirts, and well, I do have this uh, cover that I use so for the electronics, so it barely fits there, I checked that. And in terms of the view from the front, this is it, so you can see the uh, lead screw going up in the same place and you can see the coupling that i used this is the uh, cheap uh, one of the ones with the rubber in them and they're usually black i've heard good things about them they're apparently better than these but uh, yeah this is what i had so uh, on hand at least but uh, if this works i can easily swap to that later down the line and well uh, yeah i guess that's the that's most of what happened Honestly, this took like six hours, but yeah, that's, this is all I guess, so I'll get to printing a new part, probably another Banshee, and then come back to you with the results. Okay, the testing and printing is now done, and our fleet is here, so let's take a look at what changed in between. So, I'm not going to talk about them individually for that long. This was the first uh, print with the belted Z drive and uh, uh, this was the first print with the belted Z drive and the pocket watch and well you can see that it doesn't really look that good you can see some vertical lines some uh, extrusion problems and some bridging problems as well though that's obviously unrelated and also one of the easiest way you can tell with the earlier prints is the text in here is just a random collection of zits and then the later prints is still not re readable but it looks better and this is with the mobius 4 it looks a little better but it still has most of the same problems so uh, from this i increased the current on the uh, x y and at the time it was still belted c so z as well motors and this is what we got it looks definitely it looks better uh, there are less lines and yeah overall as i said it looks better but the problem the problems still do exist so uh, it, it isn't really that great for example here where you're supposed to insert the flag you can see some uh, problems with the extrusion there and while the random collection of zits 
aren't as bad they're still there and the text isn't readable and this was uh, another test with it I did I think I increased the current even further with this and well not much changed here I just have another current exper uh, experiment and uh, yeah again I cancelled this at some point because it's not looking that good you can still see the lines etc now here we're getting to the direct drive Z actually uh, oh yeah this is direct this is direct drive Z's uh, first attempt but in this case the current was set too low so some of the uh, artifacts are still there but with this yeah, they are much less noticeable and yeah you can see that I finally got a decent print after some time my earlier prints with the V0 were also pretty good but sometime in between uh, I don't know exactly what happened but the print quality got really worse really quick so um, yeah again this looks better from this, I uh, one I fixed a small issue with the hot end and two, just to test I turned interplate off on the Z drive, and uh, well the issue I fixed with the hot end was a fix, so this is the difference from the interpol turning off the interpolation, but I think this looks slightly worse than the interpolation on or true. So I'm going to keep it on, it also makes the printer quieter anyway. And uh, yeah, I guess this is the best print we got with the best settings. So I'm sticking with this. Next thing I need to do is adjust pressure advance. Well, as you might have guessed, a few changes are happening to the Pi, Pi Zero, the Voron Zero and uh, uh, yeah i guess i should walk you through it and the reason behind it so uh the raspberry pi zero it was working just fine for the main sale etc but for some reason that i have no idea why it just doesn't communicate with the uh, adx l345 i tried two models and neither one worked so right now i have the this model maybe uh, yeah I guess I can show it here right now I have this model installed there but before this and uh, I had this and also just to make sure if this wasn't broken I also had this and well none of them work and none of them work directly wired to the Pi either so it's not a wiring issue it's just uh, I don't know why, I have no logical explanation, but the Pi Zero doesn't work with these. I don't know, maybe you do, if you do, leave it in the comments below, maybe it's the hardware limitation of the Pi Zero. But uh, on top of that, the Pi Zero does have a few more limitations. Uh, the display connector thing, not the display, sorry, camera connector thing. As I said, I do have a solution. I already ordered it, but it's still not a neat solution. And the uh, wiring just soldered to these pads, that's also not that great. And also, another problem is, since the GPIO pins were in here, it also uh, was really hard to get access to them for wiring the buttons, for example, or the accelerometer and possibly a few other things in the future it just was uh, hard to use so uh, yeah all of that is uh, leading to i'm um, switching to a raspberry pi 3 i think i'm still going to run octo uh, not octoprint uh, main sale on this but uh, since i have this space i probably should have removed this panel to show but since this space is now free thanks to the uh, nema 17 that's driving the lead screw directly without a belt you can hear my cat. Uh, since that space is free, I can fit a Raspberry Pi 3 there without any issues. A lot has happened since the last update and I want to show you some of the things that changed. So 
so first let's start with the camera in the last episode I think I mentioned that I had a solution for that then you know uh, I switched from the Raspberry Pi 0 to the Raspberry Pi 3 which means while I wasn't lying I did have a solution for using the Raspberry Pi 0 I'll put it on the screen right now I did ended up not needing it so this is just connected with a regular ribbon cable and and on the computer you can see that it's working right now it's at a terrible angle that's why you're not seeing much but yeah it is working though that art artifacting didn't happen before so no idea what's going on there but yeah if that's uh, something that continues to happen i'll investigate it i also wired these uh, buttons finally now all of them work for example as a demonstration you can see that the LEDs are on and I added a relay in between so I can do this and you'll notice that I'm doing that with a single button getting that to work was also kind of tricky uh, clipper does support if commands for g-code buttons but uh, to you know to do a if uh, command you also have to read the attributes so you can uh, if the LED is on turn it off if the LED is off turn it on that's what I was programming and yeah I had to find the way to actually read if it is on or not but I finally figured it out and yeah you can see it's working the rest of the buttons are working as well just they're not something that I can demonstrate like resume post stop etc since no print is happening right now I can demonstrate them, but trust me, they're working. In the back, in here, you can see that it's uh, really crowded now. The bottom rear chamber, uh, it's just with this mod, we have many chambers now. So here, you'll notice that I had to get rid of the crimp terminals that we I used and just soldered them directly for the power plug and that's because i had to relocate the buck converter to here and with that in place this barely fits in there so yeah at least it fits and on this side you can see the ribbon cable and if i manage to angle this thing properly i'm still getting used to the gimbal uh, you can see the Raspberry Pi there as well, so I mounted it there, and um, you can see the one of the screws here, for example, for it. So I just mounted it directly to this aluminium plate, not aluminum. Anyway, uh, and this is the current state of the main electronics chamber. You can see that it's also pretty crowded in here. Uh, there are a few things to show so you can see this bunch of uh, DuPont cables they are connected to the GPIO headers of the Duet Wi-Fi that's how I'm controlling the, the buttons but for example you can see the relay here I don't think I'm going to be able to show the GPIO wires of that but they are wired to the Raspberry Pi GPIO so that's controlled through the Raspberry Pi that's controlled through Duet and well Raspberry Pi is still you know it's still Clipper, not Octoprint or anything like that. Uh, also, great. Also, you'll notice that I don't have the OLED right now. I'm going to replace that. That's not too big of an issue. So this is the OLED I was using. I think I linked this in the last episode, so I'm not going to link it again. But this is a WaveShare one you can find on AliExpress. Now, normally, this is a hat so there are female G G uh, du DuPont headers here for the Raspberry Pi's GPIO that's how I mounted this thing and when removing the Raspberry Pi Zero from there I ripped the SMD soldered GPIO headers off so uh, yeah I tried to solder it back on it didn't work and I don't think I will be able to show it but there are a couple of lifted pads as well when from my soldering attempts so uh, yeah, I'm, I still suck at SMD, is kind of the point there. 
I'll have to replace this, I'll have to buy another one. And once I have one, I'll just replace it back in there and run the GPIOs to the Raspberry Pi directly. Lastly, I did have trouble with the ADXL 345 accelerometer with this mount uh, previously. And I think that's something to do with the Raspberry Pi Zero. But in my attempts of troubleshooting, I did switch to this module, which seems to be more popular. And well, this is my design. It mounts in front of the fan there. It uh, uses the same screw holes. But anyway, this didn't work either. Sorry, I had to hit the... This didn't work either. So yeah, that's kind of what led me to the re replacement of the Pi Zero with the Pi 3. But anyway, I'm not talking about that. The um, reason I'm bringing this up is I am actively still working on getting this stuff. I just had too many uh, fucking troubles with getting this thing to work. Not only on the V0, but on the V2 as well. It just didn't want to work. And I also had other troubles like the SKR died on that one and the uh, uh, SD card of the Pi Zero died on this one. So yeah, that also took some time. And now I'm having yet another tr issue problem. And that's with the, with the module I designed. Uh, yeah, I guess I disassembled it, but this is supposed to be a maple mini mount this time. This is one of those STM32 F103 boards, kind of like the blue pill boards. And you can use this with uh, with the ADXL345 as a standalone module. I wanted to design something like that and swap between machines. And uh, some people run that successfully, so this is definitely something to do with my problems. And in this case, uh, I flashed the STM32 Duino bootloader to this, which allows you to flash firmware through the DFU utility through USB. So uh, yeah, that doesn't work for some reason on this one. I tried uh, manually connecting the USB pins uh, with GPIO adders as well, just in case the connection here is bad, because I didn't want to re-attempt to SMD solder those pins. And I've heard that those could be bad, but yeah, that doesn't seem to be the case. Wiring directly to the uh, data pins still doesn't work, so my Maple Mini here is, for some reason, dead on arrival. So uh, yeah, that's the kind of thing that's going on. As for the V2, there's another thing that's delaying it as well. It's the it's this uh, Galileo extruder, and bad noobs uh, fan cool better uh, layer cooling fan design so i want to do those before i do the accelerometer on the v2 reason being is well the weight of the carriage will change so ideally you want to do it with those installed so uh, yeah at least i have all of my comparison prints from before so now that i got the v0 working as well after I figure out the uh, Maple Mini situation, I will uh, do the V0 and then after doing the Galileo, I will do the V2 as well. Combine the data of those to one video and share it with you. And as a separate video, not as a part of this uh, series. And uh, I'll, I'm also doing some tutorials for that as well. Um, halfway done of one of the, one of them which is about enabling the ADXL support on Clipper and uh, another one will be about creating your own standalone unit once I figure out the problem with mine I theoretically know how, how everything is supposed to work it just looks like a hardware failure also want to mention that getting these buttons to work was also fairly tricky not because it's a complex idea, it's not. The idea is pretty simple, you just press the button, it jumps ground to the pin and it works. But the problem was the some bugs in Clipper. Clipper seems to be very stable for you know, more common stuff you do on Clipper, like you know just printing stuff and things like that. But uh, when it comes to G-code buttons, for example, I ran into so many troubles. For example, no matter what, this, these don't work on the Raspberry Pi uh, GPIO, even if you enable the Clipper MCU for Raspberry Pi. 
also had trouble with those on the SKR and yeah that S maybe the SKR was faulty in that case I don't know but uh, in this case since I didn't want to do the SKR thing again I wired them on my V2 to a Maple Mini the same board that I showed you before and that works perfectly fine the problem is every time you connect to that Maple Mini the buttons trigger and yeah once they trigger it causes some problems and that is definitely a bug one they are confirmed uh, so not confirmed uh, configured the same way on my v2 and v0 and it works fine on my v0 plus the day the time i configured the, the buttons here they worked fine as well it's some sort of a weird communication bug between the between the clipper on the Raspberry pi and the maple mini and that's causing the problem also if i do a firmware restart on my v2 for example uh, it doesn't work it, it just gives me a connection error and only way around that seems to be to completely restart the raspberry pi and that fixes it so uh, yeah there are a lot of bugs is what i'm getting at but uh, yeah they work at least so uh, i can move on from the from the uh, buttons on the v0 and hopefully i, I can move on from the button from dealing the buttons hopefully I can move on from doing the button configuration on the V2 as well pretty soon and yeah that's also another thing that was delaying the accelerometer well I talked a lot <sighs> anyway uh, yeah I guess that's it for the V0 for this episode uh, there was one more thing I wanted to mention so it's getting long I know uh, you might have realized that I'm uploading videos on Mondays as well now. I don't want to do a separate channel update about this, so uh, yeah, I just I'm just going to mention that at the end of this video. So yeah, I'm trying doing Monday videos. I used to do them back in the day as well. This channel is, believe it or not, three years old, and other than a year year ish of hiatus, I mostly uploaded videos uh, consistently. But my schedule used to be two video per week, reduced it to one. I'm trying to bring it up to two again, thanks to COVID. I now uh, I save a, lot, a ton of time traveling every day, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to make use of that time. So uh, yeah, I'll try to without sacrificing quality. I'll try to make two videos a week for a while and see how it goes. If I can't keep up, which was the reason I reduced to one, but back then you know the, the COVID stuff wasn't the case. Uh, if I can't keep up, I'll go back to one video as well, but yeah, it's something to test and uh, Yeah, I guess that's it. So promise this is the actual end. I hope you enjoyed the episode If you did, please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching